Has this been under the headmaster's nose all this time? That must be the pedestal. Professor Fitzgerald, can you hear me? I am here. In this place, you may call me Neve. You shall be witness to a fable. Pay attention. Things are not always as they seem. You must move swiftly and cautiously. Use the tools you encounter to find me. The first you will need is a cloak. In this place as in life, death takes many forms. Avoid each of them at all costs. straight ahead. They won't be able to find me if I go up there. my chance. I'm coming, Neve. I can't stand this much longer! I need to get out of here! <laughs> Two 
too many. I must cross this road as fast as I can. That's where I need to go, but I need to find a way past them. This way, but more danger. There must be a way to find you. I need to turn back. There's no getting past them that way. That doorway looks like the only safe way forward. Closed tight. No way but forward, I suppose. my chance. They can't see me at all. I can get closer to them. This is the way forward. Finally free. Now where are you, Neve? yet to find me. Keep searching, but this time you will be unable to hide. Wield the wand you see before you. Do not squander its extraordinary power.
ahead. Nothing is what it seems. She's gone. Oh, poor Neve. Gone so young. Let us always honor her memory. We won't be the same without her. Magic of the stone can only conjure a shadow of my former self. But there is no light without shadow as there is no shadow without light. Simply because you can eliminate darkness does not always mean that you should. Remember that as you witness my memory. Dora, what you did for your father was remarkable, wasn't it? And Percival needn't worry about the strands of emotion or the traces that this magic leaves. I found a way to contain all of it. You haven't stopped. Goblin Silver. You spoke to a goblin about this. Don't worry, he has no idea what we're containing. We don't know what effect any of this may have. The emotions, the dark traits... You sound like Percival. And as it happens, I do know. It is a source of strength, of focus. Somehow it enhances my ability to wield magic. I don't follow, Isadora. I think we can harness it. Power like this is not to be toyed with in the wrong hands. You saw what I did for my father. Oh, Neev, imagine the good we could do. Everyone is in some kind of pain. Breathe it in. Oh, 
can feel it. Oh, Isadora. This must stop. All of us. You've kept this power to yourselves for so long because you fear it. I choose to embrace it. Is it true? Has someone completed the first three trials? It is, and I have. But you are so... Young? I know. You must be Professor Bacar. I am. Pleased to meet you. The pensive memory I just witnessed was Isadora inhaling painful emotions. She was. I found it disturbing. How did she gain power from it? How did she harness it? It was disturbing. Although, I wonder that you are asking about her power. I hesitate to reveal the location of my pensive to someone who, perhaps, has yet to understand the responsibility of power. I can assure you, Professor, I do. In fact, what you don't yet know is that a dangerous goblin called Ranrock has accessed the repository at Rookwood Castle. He has learned to harness the contents of it as a source of immense power. He plans to use that power against wizardkind. We have no time to waste. I see. Nonetheless, the knowledge you shall gain after you witness my memories is too valuable to share without further consideration. I shall require time to confer with the other Keepers. It seems we have no choice but to wait, frustrating as it is. I heard what you told Professor Bakar. Isadora was inhaling emotions to gain power? She was. And she pulled emotions, as she did from her father, from Professor Fitzgerald, without permission. Monstrous. What's more, she said that she found a way to store the traces of magic she extracted in goblin silver. The repositories? Possibly. There's something I didn't get a chance to tell you earlier. Ranrock has been digging at locations tied to the five names he found in the journals of a goblin metal worker named Bragball. Five names? The Keepers, and who else? Isadora Morganak? Precisely. That's how he's been one step ahead of us. Gringotts, the Tower, Rookwood Castle. If the Keepers won't tell you where the next trial is yet, I say we at least maintain a watch on Ranrock. Perhaps he'll lead us to more information. Perhaps. I hope to hear from Lodgok soon. I haven't heard anything since I learned of the drills. Oh, and as you've probably guessed by now, your Polyjuice plan worked like a charm. I knew it would. I may have done too good a job distracting Black. I had no idea he can't hold his fire whiskey.
Pardon me, is everything all right? No, no, it's not. We only had two bells to go, but she just had to go and spoil things. I'm afraid I don't follow who spoiled things. Was it what bells? <sighs> Professor Black ordered Mr. Moon to take down the bells in the bell tower. Said they were giving him a headache. Those bells are a part of Hogwarts. I wasn't about to let that happen. So I asked my friend Adelaide to help me put them back. We've always been a duo of sorts, Adelaide and Evangeline, Addie and Evie. Anyway, it was going swimmingly until Black started asking questions. Then she wasn't comfortable with our rule breaking. Now I'm stuck, unable to tell which bell goes where. Is it really that important that the bells go back up? Is it really that important? They're part of the school's history. Those bells likely told a young Merlin that he was running late to charms, or called Ignatia Wildsmith to dinner. We can't simply fiddle with history. We're meant to be its stewards. It's certainly an odd decree, even for Black, taking down the bells for a headache. I agree. I thought it might also have been that they interrupted his hourly naps. That's all he does in his office, you know. But then I heard... Can you keep a secret? I can. I heard from Alice, who heard from Ollie, who heard from Eugenia, that it's because the bells... reminded him of his wedding day. Breaks out in a sweat every hour on the hour. But mum's the word. If only two bells are left, isn't it fairly easy to tell which goes where? Easy for you, perhaps. I happen to be tone deaf. Mother likes to say I couldn't carry a tune if it hopped on my back like a chocolate frog. No point putting them back in if they don't sound just as they did before, for the sake of historical accuracy. Perhaps I could help put the bells back up. Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. The bells are in the bell tower just above the music room. You're certainly of more help than Adelaide. I imagine the bells are just... In the bell tower. Revelio! Lumos. <laughs> Revelio. Well, I have friends. Lumos. It's true. She'd fallen over in Piccadilly Circus. It's the delightful scent of gardenias you'll be unleashing. No, it's violently rank, and it's not. Rebellion. Huh. 
Revelio. 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 That relic is the key to saving Anne. I know it. Meet me outside of Feldcroft as soon as you can. I hate to see a creature get put down like that. But trolls have no business in Hogsmeade. My brother's doing well, thanks to you. And he listens to me now. Turns out having beats for feet teaches a memorable lesson. Today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmose the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly, some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I... I think I know that name. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Oh, of course. Hodgok said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Oh, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbald Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here in the Bell Tower entrance hall. All students introduce themselves to this... Revelio.
quick hand and deft witches and wizards. This Grimboard was to help with the Lord. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Why didn't you tell us it was just his skull? Well, of course he's just a skull. Everyone knows Grimbold Weft died of Dragonbox in 1753. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Afbuddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic water. Our tower is a retinue. Knights, or rather, statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen eyed students will spot the statue of Sir Athpuddle of the cheerful countenance nestled among the ranks. His fame was not won by these bits of broom are all that's left of a rebellion, Celine Wartnobby. Sir Skaggledog the Heedless once challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical scullers. chairs. Where his warm and approachable demeanor was celebrated by old friends and newcomers alike. I encourage everyone to make the waving statue who quote. There's nothing quite so magical as history. Dusty, immutable. History. This is a centuries old likeness of Pangadon. Fearless mouse hunter and devoted study companion. People have always loved him. Revelio! Hogwarts is impervious. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Afpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing. Died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Goblins and wizard kind will never trust each other. Yes, well, it takes a cauldron to raise a chispurfle, as they say. Mm, history does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do this. So they say. At least, I like to say that. Oh, 
Revelio. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. How can I help you? What do you have for sale? What are we in the market for today? Have I mentioned you're welcome to stop by any time? Rebellion. Huh. Sebastian, a lost relic from a catacomb which requires a dark sacrifice. I know how it sounds, but if this can help you, it's worth the risk. Does Ominous know about this? He helped find the scriptorium where we discovered Slytherin's spellbook. Very well. If Ominous will be there, I'll meet you. We don't have much time. Solomon wants to leave Feldcroft. What? Leave? Never mind. You need to stall him. Buy us time, Anne. Please. I shall do my best. I'll be in touch. Solomon can't take Anne from Feldcroft. Where would they go? When would I see her? Sebastian, don't think I've forgotten about your goblin friend. I haven't. But I appreciate you setting our earlier discussion aside for now. Of course. I can't believe my uncle wants to leave Feldcroft. Anne's going to stall him. She must. We need time. Time? For what? I've learned more about the relic. I cross-referenced Slytherin's spellbook with everything in the library on relics and dark sacrifices. That's when I realized something. I believe the relic will only work inside the catacomb. We just need to get Anne to the catacomb and work out how to make a dark sacrifice. Our biggest hurdle may be convincing Ominous. Anne will only give this a chance if he's on board. And we have to keep all of this from your uncle. If he goes to the Headmaster, well, he could be expelled. Let me handle Ominous this time. As for my uncle, he's not an Aura anymore. What he doesn't know, well, won't hurt us. Do you think your uncle would tell anyone at the Ministry about all of this if he found out? If he found out, I doubt he'd go to the Ministry. He didn't part ways with them well from what I understand. He won't say but I believe his strong aversion to dark magic has something to do with his time there. Anne thinks he once decided to fight fire with fire, so to speak, 
and resorted to using an unforgivable curse and fight against dark wizards. At least that's what she thought she heard. When he realized what his job had led him to become, he left rather abruptly. So, I'm not sure he'd go to the Ministry to report on his own family using dark magic now. Good luck with Ominous. Until we meet again. I shall let you know when the four of us should meet at the catacomb. Look for my owl. See you soon. Revelio. Alohomora. Hello. Are you here for someone as caught? That I am. Don't expect to be as lucky here as you were in Crossed Wands. Speaking of which, care to lose... I mean, play a match? Of course, Charlotte. Then may the best summoner win. Top that. Accio. Precisely as planned. Ah. 
shield. Hmm, nice technique. Precisely as planned. Hmm, nice technique. Wow, you are good. Not too proud to admit when I've lost. Where did you learn to play like that? I practice as much as I can. Practice, eh? I suppose I could try that. Well, you've only one opponent left now. I won't say more than that, but let's just say he's the best for a reason. Revelio. Our neighbor at home knows someone who's related to the inventor of Skelligrove. <sighs> it's true. Nymph of stinch cone is anymore. Do you ever wish you could like Well done putting a melder in her place. And in her own time trial. Revelio. Ah, the bells must be upstairs. Hello, Hamora. Revelio. Confirm. Bombarda. Confringo. Let me also. Action. 
Nokia. Guardian Leviosa. Ah, found them. I'll have to get those up there somehow. Wingardium Leviosa, perhaps. Accio! Wingardium Leviosa! Accio! Wingardium Leviosa! to go. Revelio. Well, that wasn't too hard. Evangeline should be pleased about this. Even if Black isn't. Looks as if Poppy's finally made a friend. Revelio. If 
he thinks he's getting... The bells are back up, Evangeline. Oh, you're a credit to the school. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait for the headmaster to hear them. I wish I could see his face. Future generations may not truly appreciate what you've done, but I do. And I hope that you do as well. You don't know how much this means for me and for Hogwarts. I don't feel well. Why don't you go and see Nurse Blaney? Yes. We'll Rebellion. Not a chance. Last time I was in there, she spilled the bottle of jelly. When I fell off my broom and broke six bones. Revelio. exciting news to share.
Jake has some exciting news to share. Hello, Deke. Professor Weasley said you had an idea. Indeed, Deke does. Uh, Deke knows that you want to learn about all sorts of beasts. And Deke recently heard rumors of a phoenix nest in a nearby mountain. A phoenix nest? I wonder if it belongs to the phoenix Natty mentioned, the one Harlow and the poacher pack are after. Deke would not doubt it. If Deke has heard of it, surely the nasty poachers have as well, which means it could be in danger. Well, I'd better go and rescue it then, hadn't I? Deke thinks so. So majestic a beast should not fall into such vile hands. Deke is not sure why, but Deke feels that saving a phoenix might help to make amends for what happened with Deke's prior master. Deke hopes that you are able to find the phoenix and bring it to the room where it will be safe. Party to attend by oh, I'm gonna... I'm